Hey, what's up, everybody? This is Jordan from PictureMonk.com, and welcome to a new po- kind of podcast that I'm trying to trying to get off the ground here. It's kind of, it's a little bit different. Uh, so for for the listening viewers, which is mostly everybody, because I've only ever done a audio podcast, this is going to be sort of a trial run. I'm doing a video podcast slash audio podcast, and so uh, if you're if you're used to listening to this po- podcast on a uh, smartphone, iPhone, whatever. It's going to be no different than uh, than anything else you've listened to in the past. But what I'm doing is I'm actually videoing this podcast, and uh, you know I kind of wanted to kind of wanted to try something to where um, I can do a little bit of show and tell, uh, if you would, if you kind of call it that way, um, while I'm doing the podcast, um, and it will um, it'll kind of help me kind of advance it just a little bit. So uh, you know if you want to check out the video portion of this, if you want, if you want to pause this and just listen to it later on YouTube or something like that, uh, head on over to the Picture Monk YouTube channel, and that is uh, picturemonk.com slash YouTube, and that'll redirect you to YouTube, and you can uh, subscribe there. So um, if you want to listen to this pure audio, fine. That's perfectly fine. That's what we've been doing the whole time. Uh, but if you want to try out the video portion, which is uh, kind of what I'm recording now, I have a, vi- a camera off to my left, and um, and so you can check it out that way. Just you know, kind of kind of tossing it up there, kind of giving a little bit of uh, you know extra stuff, so I can you know, try to try something different. You never know what might work. Uh, I don't know if it's something I'm going to be doing all the time, but I at least wanted to try it this time to see how it goes. So, um, so this podcast is going to be a little bit different from the the rest, not only because I'm recording it in video, but, um, I have, uh, one question from a, from a listener who, uh, it's a, it's a fairly long question, but I wanted to touch on it because of one, one sentence at the end. And, uh, and that has to do with printing. And then, uh, and then I have a, a kind of a, uh, what's in my bag thing that I've been wanting to do for a while, and I thought about why not do it on the podcast. Uh, so that's one reason I decided to do the uh, video portion so I can actually show the stuff. Um, but I still, you know, still describe it for the listeners. So um, if you've been looking for s- certain types of gear, because all of my my gear is pretty much cheap, uh, so if you've been looking for uh, for gear, um, you can uh, you can see what I'm shooting with and. Maybe you've been wanting certain wireless triggers or something like that. Then you can see uh, the kind that I have that works really well. So um, first of all, let's do, let's go ahead and do the the the, the gear section of it because the uh, the end part I'm kind of going to rant a little bit. I'm afraid I'm going to have a whole lot of ranting podcasts because that's kind of what last week's was, and a lot of people did enjoy that. So I don't know. I might rant more, but uh, but first of all, let's get into the gear. Let's start with the uh, the nitty gritty of it. Um, I have a uh, I have a from my camera, my main camera, my only camera pretty much, uh, is my Canon, uh, 6D, uh, the entry level, um, I guess they call it an entry level full frame camera. Uh, I can't show that on the podcast right now cause that's what I'm recording this with. Um, so that is, uh, that is off to my left there. Um, it's a, it's a really good camera. I plan on t- having that camera till it, it completely dies. Um, cause it's just, it's a really good all around camera. Uh, I, I, you know, I was kind of deb- debating with whether to get the Canon 6D or the Canon T, uh, not T, uh, the Canon uh, 5D Mark III. Uh, but after doing a lot of research, I found that you know, the Canon 6D has a lot of the the features that the uh, the uh, 5D Mark III has that I that I wanted. Um, you know, without the the higher price. So another one thing that I did want is the Canon 60 has the uh, the Wi-Fi built in, and uh, I really wanted that option. Uh, I was debating on whether to get the uh, 5D Mark III and get the Cam Ranger, but that has built in, and that that does what I needed to do. So I kind of got the lesser price camera, and uh, it's it's suiting me really well. Most of the photos, if not all the photos, in, in the in the most recent uh, times that I've been publishing stuff has been with that camera, and it's. Uh, I just love it. I think it's a great camera. Um, so uh, let's see. As far as lenses go, that's my camera. Uh, my lenses, I have the kit lens that comes with the um, the Canon 60, and that is I'm trying to read the <laughs> the real lens because that's what I'm recording it with. Uh, I don't memorize all this stuff. Yeah, the 24 to 105 kit lens. It's the f4. Um, it's a it's a really good all around lens. Um, most of the time, I use that. Uh, you know, if it's just regular stuff like, you know, going out and taking pictures of family and friends and whatnot, um, just a really good versatile lens and it's a kit lens. And, uh, so if that tells you something, um, kit lenses are not dead. Kit, kit, kit lenses aren't the ones that you should throw away and just never use again. So, uh, I really, really love that lens. 
Uh, let's see what else I got. Uh, that one I can't show either because I'm recording with that one. Um, I have the cheap, the nifty 50 that I can actually show. Um, it's the uh, F f1.1.8 i should remember that the f1.8 uh really good lens super super simple lens um really good for video really good if you want that really shallow depth of field um just a really good little lens i like to use that for portraits most of the time uh let me reach down to my camera bag so if you're if you're listening this on the audio you might see here a little dipping in the audio uh let's see i have the uh, 17 to 40 uh 17 to 40 f4 um, wide angle lens for the full frame, really good lens. Uh, I, I enjoy this a lot. Um, real estate stuff. It's really great at not a lot of, um, not a lot of barrel distortion. Uh, if it is, it's very minimal and it can be corrected easily in Photoshop. Very good lens. Uh, I looked at a couple, um, that I thought about getting and, uh, this one was cheaper and even though it's an F4, it, you know, it still, it still works. So, uh, you know, I'd rather, I'd rather pay a little bit lesser price and make it work for my situation than pay, you know, twice the price just to get uh, a little bit more light. So, uh, that's a really good lens. And another lens that I got is, uh, not really mine. I'm kind of borrowing it. Um, but it's, um, it's a 75 to 300 and i basically use it. Uh, it's a 75-300 uh, f4 5.6. Um, it, uh, it's a really good lens if you're trying to get in close, but it's not really meant for a full-frame camera. So you can't get as close as you might as, uh, might with a crop sensor camera, but uh, I really, I mean, it's just a cheap, cheap distance, uh, long-distance lens, cheap, long telephoto lens. It's, it's just really simple. Um, and it works okay. I mean, I don't, I hardly ever use it, but I, I basically borrowed it just for one quick thing. And then that was it. And I never got to give it back. So <laughs> I do have that in my bag right now. So let's get into a little bit of the accessories and we'll start off with, I got this newer remote, uh, not newer, like, it, it, you know, not, it's new, it's not new. <laughs> it's the new, brand newer and it's the, uh, it's a basically a time-lapse remote. Um, it can be used as a shutter release, um, but it's a cabled, uh, kind of meant for time lapses. And, um, you know, it's, I think it's like five bucks or something on Amazon, something really cheap. And so I use that often to do all my time lapses and it's, uh, just a really cheap little remote. The only thing I don't like about these is, uh, they don't come with off buttons, which is really weird. And you just have to take the batteries out, uh, every time you use them, uh, when you want to turn them off. So, uh, very cheap, really like it. Um, let's see. I have a good flash unit right here. Let's see. You got the uh, the YN 562, uh, really good from Young Nua. Um, really good flash. Uh, I had a couple other cheap ones before, and I really really enjoy this one. Um, it, it it has a good recycle time. Uh, you can zoom with it. It's got the pop card. Uh, really good, and it's a manual flash, which is kind of what I wanted to begin with. So um, really good. I love this. I love this brand. And it's probably like 60 bucks. where if you get the Canon brand, it's a lot a lot more expensive. And let's see, for the wireless triggers, I have the Cowboy Studio, really inexpensive. Uh, it's a four-channel uh, wireless trigger, so I can pop it on, on the bottom of the flash unit and just pop them off off camera. I really enjoy these. Uh, the only thing I don't like about them is the, uh, they seem to wear out the batteries a lot. And it's, uh, you know, it's AAA batteries, but, you know, what can you do? So, uh, I really enjoy these and let's see what else I got. Um, got a couple filters here, just regular, like neutral density filters, polarizers, stuff like that. Nothing too crazy. And let's see other photography gear. Um, I guess I would consider this one a lot of the gear that I carry around all the time. I'm still rocking the, uh, the GoPro hero three. Uh, it's a good little camera. Uh, it does what it's supposed to do. I, I did. Uh, it comes with the um, comes with the waterproof case. Everybody knows that. Uh, <clears throat> but uh, I did buy the. Uh, I guess what do you call it? The, the housing for it. The where the lens can be exposed. I did buy that, and it was, uh, it was a pretty good purchase because sometimes the the waterproof case can cloudy up the image, and so I really uh, I really wanted to get the lens exposed. So I got that. 
Uh, and let's see, I got a. See, a lot of this stuff is pretty cheap. It's not. It's nothing. It's not. It's nothing that you would like run out to the store and get because somebody wanted. You know, it's the greatest and newest thing. Uh, even this. This is. <laughs> this is so. This is so silly to have, but it's awesome. Uh, it's the bubble level for your hot shoe on your camera. You would uh, you would probably never expect to do this, but if I will say if you're shooting real estate stuff, and you're even if your camera does have a, uh, a leveler on it, um, this is very very helpful. Uh, it's just a, a three axis bubble level. Slap it onto your hot shoe, and it'll tell you if your camera is level or not. Um, it, uh, this has saved me a bunch of times because I thought my camera was or I thought my shot was uh, straight, but it's it was when I got it back to the computer. Um, you know, it was way off. And so I did have to go back out and I used this when I went back out and it, uh, it got me a really good sharp photo that was, uh, level all the way through. So, and this is, this is nothing. It's super cheap. Um, and I got a, uh, case. I put a GoPro sticker on the case case to house all of my SD cards. Um, you know, the Canon 60 only shoots with the uh, one SD card slot. So I have those just to, uh, to have with me. Um, I'm even going to include my iPhone because I do take a lot of photos of my iPhone. So I would consider that a photography gear. And so this is the iPhone um, 6S, the newer, the newish one, newer one. Uh, let's see what else we can talk about here. Uh, I'm trying to run through all this real quick because I did, I have had some questions about what's, what gear do I have. So I wanted to kind of run that by everybody. As far as the bag, photography bag, it's a, it's one of those Canon bags that you would normally find at like Best Buy off the shelf. Uh, it holds all this stuff. Uh, it, it holds all this stuff neatly, uh, comfortably, and um, you know why get why get in a really expensive bag when you don't have to. Um, let's see. For editing, I have my uh, my bamboo pad right here. Uh, it's the it's probably three years old. Still works great. Um, Computer wise, uh, you know, it's the iMac uh, 2010 model. That shows you how how old this thing is, <laughs> but it still runs strong. Uh, 2010 model uh, works great. 27 or 24 inch, um, two screens, Photoshop, Lightroom, all that stuff. So that's basically all the gear that you know. If you see the photos that I've taken, all of that stuff was taken with this simple setup of gear. You know, I don't have millions of lenses and millions of dollars of crap and. You know, you don't need all that. So, um, so that's my gear. That I just wanted to run by that. I've, I think I had four questions about, can you show us your 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 uh, gear collection or whatever? I don't really have a collection because it's just it's the gear that I use uh, every day. So, uh, so instead of answering all that stuff, um, you know, through email or whatever, uh, you guys can watch the video and see. So, I hope you enjoyed that little quick segment there. Um, and I want to try. I want to get to. Uh, this question now that I was talking about earlier. And so uh, the question, it really came about um, because, uh, well, I guess I'll just read the question. So uh, this is from Brian McPhee from Richmond, Virginia. And he said, hey, Jordan, I was listening to your most recent shows and have a question for you. I have heard you talk a lot about many topics, but never about printing photos. I have uh, I have a new... Okay, there it is. I am a new wedding photographer, and uh, when it comes to giving my clients prints, I have found this is something they are not interested in. Most, if not all, of my clients just want the photos in digital formats, and that is it. Should I still be offering photos as an option or prints as an option? Uh, are prints dead? Thanks and love the show. So that's kind of what I want to talk talk about: is are prints dead? Um, I imagine for some people they are. I, I, uh, I love printing photos. Um, I wish I had more wall space to hang the photos. Uh, you know, it's kind of like if you, you can go on anybody's website. Uh, you can go on any Behance website. You can go on any portfolio website. Um, you can look at all of this great stuff online in a in the same format. So you know, photo on the screen. Um, and that's it. There's no, there's no options there. All you're seeing is a digital representation of the photo. But when you go to print the photo, you have a whole lot more options about how you want the photo to be displayed. And what I mean by that is when I go to print stuff, 
Um, paper, paper prints, dead. I don't, I don't like paper prints anymore. Uh, imagine if they are archival prints that are, you know, uh, you know, hundred year archival prints or whatever. I imagine those will be, you know, probably nicer than the regular Kodak paper or whatever. Um, but when it comes to printing, I only use metal prints or metal paper. And the reason I do that is because number one, it's, 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 it's not kitschy, but it's sort of a, a commodity. A lot of people don't know about those, even though they're advertised all over the place for photographers. But for people who want prints, they don't even think about that. They think about going to CVS, Walgreens, Walmart, whatever, and, and just going to a kiosk and boom, boom, you're done. That's all they think about. So as a photographer, you need to educate. You need to show that th you know there are more options as far as printing goes. So... I use metal paper because it has that, you know, wow factor, you know, uh, I do use, uh, I do sometimes want to print, um, aluminum prints that are on, on a sheet of aluminum. Uh, those are a little more pricey. Not a lot of people go for those. Uh, and obviously the, the larger you get, the more expensive they are. So I choose metal and I also get them mounted on foam core so that it has still a, a rigid structure and easily to pop in a frame. And there you go. Um, but as far as is printing dead, I think a lot of people think that printing is dead because a lot of people don't want prints, just like Brian was saying. Uh, a lot of people want they or they want prints, um, but they want to get them themselves. Uh, if I was doing a a wedding, you know, if I was being a wedding photographer and I was able to offer offer prints, I would not I would not offer them if it was putting a burden on me. So if I had a service that I could just send prints out and they would print them uh, without me even touching them, then I would definitely do that. But if it, you know, if it involves them placing an order with you and you going and you ordering the prints manually and doing all this stuff, I don't think I would ever go for that. I would sign over the uh, the usage rights, not the copyrights. <clears throat> I would sign over the usage rights to the photos, and that's one thing a lot of people do make a mistake on. Uh, when they sign over a lot of contracts that I've, I have found online, like if you want to get a generic contract for releasing your photos. A lot of it, a lot of the verbiage does say that you sign over the copyrights to the photo, and the photographer has usage rights. It needs to be the other way around. You need to make sure that you're signing over the usage rights to the photo while you, as the photographer, still own the copyrights. You know, if they want the copyrights, if they're if they know what all that information means, then charge them a little bit higher price. Um, but uh, but as far as printing goes, I don't think printing's dead because. Once you see a printed photo, you're like, oh my gosh, wow, how does that even, you know, you went there, you did this, you took that, whatever. You know, you can pull up a, a photo on an iPad and show it to somebody all day long. Everybody has photos on their iPad. Everybody has photos on their iPhone. Everybody has photos on a computer. But whipping out a, a really nice print, one that's well matted, well framed, is um, is just something that a lot of people don't don't, you know, don't do anymore. They don't take advantage of it. Um, so, you know, I love printing. I, I wish I could do more. Uh, there's a bunch of photos hanging up all over the house here. And, um, you know, I, if, if I had more wall space, I would, I would print a whole lot more. Um, if you're wanting to print your photos in order to make tons and tons of money, like all these galleries and everything, you know, good luck. It's not, it's not, it's not going to be easy, but I feel like if you, if you were like a, a, you know, like a fine art photographer, printing is necessary. It's, you can't do anything else besides print your photos and hang them up as, as art. So, um, that's where like one of those brick and mortar stores come in handy and all this kind of stuff. And, and that's a whole different, different business topic. But, um, but to answer your question, Brian, I know that was sort of a ramble, but I had a whole lot of things going on. Um, to answer your question, Brian, uh, if if it's if it puts a burden on you to print the photos when nobody's even hardly ordering their photos, just do away with it. If it's something that you know, like a like Zenfolio has a service where you know you you can go online and you say I want this this photo and this photo and this photo and five by sevens and send, then another a lab handles it for you. You don't have to worry about anything. You can probably keep that because it's not doing anything for you. So that would be my answer to your uh, your question, Brian. Um, but you know, in my opinion, is are prints dead? No, they're just not used, not used anymore when they should be used. 
So, uh, thanks for the question, Brian. Uh, I guess that's the end of the podcast. Um, that's kind of the things I wanted to, you know, kind of get off my head here. Um, just kind of wanted to do the video thing, get that going to see how well, uh, well that is received. And, um, and that's about it. I think one thing I want you to check out is this is released on a Tuesday. So, uh, make sure you go back. Uh, if you're not on, uh, if you're not subscribed to the YouTube channel, make sure you subscribe and check out a really cool, uh, time-lapse video that I did of, uh, of editing. Um, I'll give you a quick synopsis of the story. Uh, my buddy for the last three years, uh, on Halloween has sent a photo to me of his, uh, his, his, three girls or two girls most of the time but this year it was his three girls in a, in a corn maze <laughs> and so um every year i take in i turn it into like a zombie photo because we we're nerds and we play um call of duty black ops and we we get online and, and play against each other and stuff like that and uh so we play zombies all the time in call of duty black ops and uh, so I kind of model it after that, and I always send it to him, and and uh, I really hope his girls like it. But uh, this this year I made a time lapse of it, so you can see uh, you know a process of it. It was it only probably took me about 15 minutes or so, but uh, the time lapse is condensed down to about a minute 20 or so, and uh, you can check that out there. And so make that that was released on Sunday, so check that out. And uh, let me know what you think about that. So, uh, all right, I'm going to end this uh, in this podcast now. Make sure you check the video version if you want to see all the gear. Uh, if you want to get more information on, on the gear that I use, go to picturemonk.com slash gear, and that will take you to the gear page, and that's all the stuff that I recommend. And uh, that's about it. Uh, this is Jordan from picturemonk.com, and I will see you guys next week.